What is the season? But you can see I'm still in a windbreaker and colds because in Ushaya we are at uh, 55 degrees, so around 10 degrees from the Antarctica. So it's also very cold here. In daytime, the temperature is from 6 to 7 degrees centigrade. Not to mention the rain earlier, which brings the weather colder. Behind me, you can see some military ships or warships because Ushaya is also a military base in Argentina. They have some military deployment here because Ushaya has very important um, strategic importance in military sense. Ushaya is four hours flight from uh, Buenos Aires, but it's only 800 kilometers to the Antarctica. So Ushaya is the closest port and the most convenient city to travel to the Antarctica. Actually, around 90% of ships that are going to Antarctica set sail here. Tourists, explorers, and scientists begin their trips from Ushaya. It's a very important transit point. There are some Aboriginal population here, the Yamana group. In the past, they used to have a very uh, quiet life. They hunt. They hunt sea lions, and later Magellan discovered the continent. The Europeans uh, flew into this region, and their lives have also been changed. Uh, this is a museum called End of the World Museum. Later, if you have opportunity to visit Australia, you can come to this museum where you have a very detailed English uh, language brochures. We also have some uh, common sense to share with you so that you can understand the Yamana people better. Ushaya, in its early days, was a place where prisoners were uh, displaced. At that time, the Argentina government set up prison bases here, and they sent uh, all the felony prisoners to this region. In 1902, they renovated the prison here. And at that time, actually, the number of major criminal offenders was equal to the number of local population, around 600. Now the prisons have been turned into a museum. It's also a fa very famous tourist site to build this prison. A lot of stones and uh, wood materials were needed to transport those materials. They built up a rail line. It's also called the southernmost rail on the world. On my r right hand side, you can see the Ushaya port. 
We can also show you a video clip so that you can appreciate the scenery, the beacon, and the small island here uh, in this estuary. Ushuaia offers beautiful landscape around 1902. The Ushuaia city had only 1,000 to 2,000 people as its population. But in recent years, the population has been on the rise. In the last uh, census, the Argentina government uh, revealed that uh, the resident population is around 60,000. Uh, here you can see a wharf and a lot of containers, many workers have come to Terra del Figo to load and unload uh, goods. This also brings in a lot of people and helped the development of Ushuaia. Actually, the industry of Argentina is not that developed. So the local government wants to encourage uh, foreign companies to establish uh, factories here. They give them some uh, tax benefits or incentives. Samsung and other mobile phone manufacturers come here to assemble their goods. Uh, those mobile products are assembled here in Ushuaia in Terra del Fuego and later transported to other parts of Argentina for uh, sales. The military base is very clear in our view. We can see the warships. Actually, this is a very important base. In CCTV news, we also uh, reported the accident, accident of Sun, Sun Run submarine. It's been over 60 days. Actually, that submarine also started from Ushuaia to go to uh, Antarctica and other places. Each year, Argentina. Uh, government sends exploration ships to Antarctica. It's still summer here, and the best time or the best season to visit Antarctica. On the right of the large ships, we can see a white one. Yeah, the white ship is one that will go to Antarctica. Its name is Silver Cloud. In the trip, uh, there will be some challenges of very high waves. So we need ships of large tonnage to undertake those tourist and exploration activities. Also, there are some small ships aside. They can be used to travel to other smaller islands, like the Penguin Island. The architecture here is also very beautiful with different colors in green, in red, or in blue. Those houses are actually tourist agencies. They sell tickets here and organize tours to watch penguins and to go up to the beacon. A landmark here. Uh, on this plate, we can see Ushaya, end of the world, and also a message of welcome from local people. 
Uh, the picture shows you the porch, the snowy mountain, the beacon or the lighthouse. Now, so this um, the city council. Like I said, Ushaya was a place where prisoners were exiled. That's how it gained reputation. Now the prison has been turned into a museum, and local people wants to make it a special tourist attraction. And they have made a lot of prison-related souvenirs. Uh, this is a magnet. You can see a prisoner trying to escape from the prison. We said that uh, Ushuaia is 3,100 kilometers from Buenos Aires. It's not that hard to escape from the prison, but it's very hard to escape the city because in the year of 1902, transportation wasn't developed. Even if a prisoner succeeded in getting out of the prison, he or she couldn't uh, get away from punishments of the nature. Here we can see the city center of Ushuaia. A statue here represents a penguin. And also some statue that uh, depicts uh, Aboriginal people. Uh, the pavilion here is a tourist center. <laughs> Let's go in and see what's inside this tourist center. If you come to Ushuaia for traveling, language might be a very big problem because uh, Argentina's official language is Spanish. If I don't speak Spanish, if I come to Argentina, would it be very difficult for me to travel, to um, communicate with the local people? Let's go in and take a look. This is the tourist center, and uh, this lady here will give us a short introduction of this uh, tourist center. In the tourist center, we can see besides Spanish, there are a lot of uh, English notice English signs. So if you can speak English, it is uh, totally OK to communicate with the local people and also do some t um, some sightseeing. There are also a lot of Chinese tourists here in Ushuaia. In many tourist spot here in Ushuaia, they would uh, provide the uh, uh, Chinese guides, uh, this kind of uh, brochures for the tourist. So through these brochures, you can have a better understanding of these places and also learn about the local history and culture so as to better enjoy the journey. One more thing that you have to do in Ushuaia is to leave some so-called footprints. Uh, for example, send a postcard and uh, also buy some tourist gifts here. You can do all of that uh, here at the tourist center.
I have here in my hand a postcard has some of the uh, signature landscapes, um, the beacons, the sea lines. And also you can choose your favorite post stamps, whichever you feel special to you, you can choose that and just leave the stamps here on your postcard. All right, that is a very beautiful postcard with uh, an image of the beacon. Here you can find a lot of uh, services and uh, that you need and find also find people to help you. And uh, these people here are more than glad to provide you with any services that you need. And you also have a lot of uh, choices of gifts. Also pick your favorite uh, post stamps here. Now we are out of the tourist center, in front of us is a small square. As I said, 90% of the ship departing from here are heading towards Antarctica, including a lot of uh, scientific uh, exploration ship from China. They will make stop here and then march on to Antarctic. The polar region travel has become very hot these days. It's, it's becoming more and more popular. So what are the things that uh, is worth seeing if you, uh, if you undertake a polar region um, journey? If you don't go to Antarctic, what can you see here in Ushuaia? We will also show you a clip, and uh, it will contain uh, everything that uh, it is uh, recommended for you. If you go to Ushuaia for traveling, you can also see some uh, content, some scenery of uh, Ushuaia. Uh, it is known as a very romantic place. And you can see some of the depiction in novels or films. This is the southernmost city in this uh, world. And uh, it's a carefree place. You can lose everything behind and start anew. Therefore, if you're heartbroken, this is a great place for you to leave everything behind and just relax. In Ushuaia, there are a lot of uh, animals, for example, penguins and sea lions. And sea and uh, seagulls. If you take a ship departing from Ushuaia, you can go on some tours to these uh, near nearby islands and take a very close look at these lovely uh, creatures and the wild animals. There are, of course, many types of penguins. In Ushuaia alone, there are seven to eight species of uh, penguins. The Magellan, uh, Magellan penguin for one, and also Babia um, penguins. They are permanent resident here, and uh, the other types of uh, um, emperor penguins, for example, can also be observed here. There are some other famous tourist spots. 
For example, in Argentina, there is a very famous glacier called Moleno Glacier. It is one of the few glaciers in the world that has not shrinked in the world. Because as we know, due to climate change, a lot of glaciers have shrinked in its uh, space and its coverage, but not Glacier Moleno. You can come very close to this piece of glacier and uh, just take in its uh, st spectacle and its beauty. It is quite close to Ushuaia. It uh, is at uh, this place, El Calafat. It's uh, only 500 uh, kilometers from here. You can take a plane, and it's only one or two hours of travel time. It's quite convenient. So how far is it from Beijing? Let's take a look. It's uh, more than 18,000 kilometers, one of the farthest place, farthest distance that we can see here on these panels. So we are very far home from home. We heard a lot of stories, the legend of Antarctic, but uh, a few of us have the opportunity to really visit that place. If you have any questions, for example, how does this uh, name of uh, Ala de Frigo, that means the place of fire. So why is this island named the place of fire? So when Magellan first came to the southernmost place of this continent, he saw that the aboriginal people are starting fires to warm up. These fires were so big that you can observe, observe them from a very far distance. It was as if this whole place, the whole ground was lit up. That's why he named this place the Island of Fire. So why do the local people, the Aboriginal people, have to lit such a big, such a big fire here in Ushuaia? The Aboriginal people, their lifestyle is that uh, they, um, they're going everywhere naked. They, they're not wearing any clothes. As you can see, the temperature here is quite low. In order to keep warm, they have to let up fire to keep them warm because they're not wearing any clothes. This is also a statue um, that depicts depicting the history of the Aboriginal people. Of course, this kind of lifestyle is not that civilized. And uh, the latecomers want to put clothes on them, and they don't need to lit up fires anymore. That's why their life pace and lifestyle were completely changed. On the contrary, taking on clothes, keep the humid, to keep the water in, and then bacteria breathes on their skin, bringing disease for them. Therefore, there is only one family with very pure uh, blood of Aboriginal people that carries on this uh, clan of blood. And uh, it is quite possible that in the near future, this bloodline will completely disappear. As I said, if you come here in the summer season, it will be the best place for you to do some sightseeing or even take a ship to go to Antarctic. So is it uh, completely not advised to visit here in winter? Would there be nothing to see? The answer is no, because if you look farther to the distance, you can see a lot of beautiful mountains. 
in the winter it will have a very heavy snow forming beautiful coverage and also a fantastic skiing um, skiing race um, playing field for all of the sports people around the world so a lot of sportsmen would uh, come a long way from Brazil or from other southern countries with small chance of seeing snow would uh, visit Ushuaia to take part in this uh, outdoor um, sports activities. As I said, the Aboriginal people are literally dying out here. Therefore, the local residents are mainly descendants of the uh, prisoners that uh, we mentioned. But the majority of the residents are visitors and migrants uh, from uh, other parts of Argentina. In Tierra de Fugo, the salary of uh, the average salary of the local people is higher. They are better paid. And sometimes people would come here and uh, for work for four or five years and make a lot of money and then go back to their hometown <laughs> and start a new life, buying houses or properties. Yesterday we met a taxi driver. He was from Bolivia. There, the temperature is around 40 degrees centigrade. But here, the coldest temperature could be as low as below zero. He never experienced such low temperature before. And about the reason he came here, that's because Bolivia provided assistance to Ushuaia to build some special architecture and a glass house, classy hotels here. And Bolivia sent many workers with those projects. Those Bolivian workers have brought dynamism to Ushaya. And also, uh, I know that the Chinese tourists are very curious about uh, local food. In North America, in Chile, and in Ushaya too, we have king crabs. There's a special way to make to cook king crab here. Many of my friends that visited Chile and tried the king crabs before told me that the king crabs look very big and beautiful, but actually its meat is not that tender or delicious. But when we come to Ushaya, even if we had bad impressions about king crabs, I still would like to recommend you to taste uh, the local king crabs here because uh, apart from the special cooking methods, we can have fresh king crabs here. Fresh is the most important quality of uh, seafood. And in Ushuaia, there's only one Chinese restaurant. There, uh, tourists could try the Chinese-style king crabs, whether it's um, boiled or spiced or uh, flavored in other ways. So besides me, we can see the cooks of Chinese-style king crabs in Ushaya. A brief introduction. My family name is Sheng. I'm from Dalian. I've settled here for many years.
Ushaya uh, is the capital of Tierra del Fuego and is situated right by the Big Old Channel. Uh, we are also at uh, the the place where the provincial government is located. All the ships that are to travel to the Antarctic set off from Ushaya and uh, they will travel for around 800 kilometers. Each year, many Chinese tourists come to Ushaya to go to the Antarctic for research or tourism purposes. My restaurant actually um, used to be the business of a friend because he was getting old. Uh, he gave me his business. Um, the previous owner was a uh, foreign people. So when our compatriots came to your restaurant, do they have some special feelings because they can even find compatriots in such a faraway city? Yeah, each year, tourist agencies and uh, um, uh, ships that are to travel to Antarctic book uh, book seats in my restaurant, and they are very interested in our food. They are very surprised to find a Chinese run here. They think it's amazing that we can open up a Chinese restaurant in Ushaya. Actually, when we first started, it was not that easy. But we spent a lot of efforts on uh, relationships with local people. And we built up very good relations with them. In my restaurant, you can see Chinese food and also uh, Western food and a fusion of two cooking styles. It may not occur to us that uh, Ushaya is the third most livable city in Argentina. It's a very high ranking. So how do you feel since you live here? But living here, I find very, I find it very close to the nature, the mountain, the sea, the vegetation with blue sky and white cloud. Uh, mild cl climate in summer, in winter. All the year round, we have very fresh air. So it's very comfortable to live here. We don't experience the extreme climates. But here it's a little bit windy and rainy. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the climate here is very good. In the last uh, Population census, Ushaya stands out as the third most populous city. It's a surprise to us. Just now, we walked you through some knowledge that, like, uh, how the name of Tierra del Fuego came. That was because Magellan 
thought it looks like a land of fire because local people made fire to keep themselves warm. And maybe you don't know that. In one hundred years ago, it might be colder, and Aboriginal people then were naked and they didn't wear clothes. After the European people taught them to wear clothes, uh, a lot of Aboriginal people died because. Germs and bacteria breed. Summer is the best best season to visit Ushuaia, but in the winter we can also ski in the mountains and try the the train. The train is also operated in winter times, and they also have a special gadget to shovel snow from the rail. That's a very special scene to watch. Uh, do you think it's inconvenient in winter to live here? No. Uh, in winter, it's also very comfortable here. In recent years, uh, the winter temperature uh, hasn't been lower than minus zero degrees centigrade. And in winter, we can see different scenery here because everything is covered by snow. Uh, will the snow? Create any inconvenience? No. They have uh, they have uh, snow shovel machines. Another knowledge point. We call Shire the end of the world, the southernmost city. And also, the lighthouse here is called Lighthouse at the End of the World. But actually, Ushuaia is not the end of the world. Five to ten kilometers from Ushuaia, there is a small town of Chile called the William Port. Because the population is very small, only uh, the places with more than 5,000 people could be called a city, but the William Port uh, has a smaller population, so it's called a town. That's why we don't call William Port the southernmost city, because it's too small, and Ushuaia has such a reputation. The lighthouse here is called Lighthouse at the End of the World. Actually, it's also a myth. Mistake because at uh, Cape Horn, a place closer to Antarctic, that lighthouse should be called the southernmost lighthouse, but it's not a place accessible to tourists. And Ushuaia was depicted in many novels and uh, uh, works of art, so people get to know it better, and we have accepted the mistake and deemed Ushuaia as end of the world. For you, living in Ushuaia, a place so far from China, uh, do you find any inconvenience? Yeah, it's nearly 20,000 kilometers from home. Uh, back in China, we thought Hainan province was far enough, but actually here it's further. When our workload is not that tough, we will think of our family and friends and be homesick. We Chinese people uh, uh, outside of the mainland are very happy to see our motherland grow stronger. I'm very excited now.
because speaking of our motherland, I'm very proud. Yesterday, before you came, I uh, played our national anthem, and that brings us a different feeling. We're still thinking of the motherland all the time. In Australia, there were people from different countries, from Bolivia and other countries. So how do they think of the Chinese people? Do they hold prejudices against us? In the 1980s, we were looking up to Western countries. But now, I think the Western people are looking up to us. This proves that China has become a stronger, wealthier country. We are very proud. Uh, even waiters and waitresses in my restaurant have begun to learn Chinese. I told them to learn our language. Even several sentences could serve um, daily use purposes. Once a tourist found our food very good, and he had a bit of curse. To praise our food. And then they only laid learn the pronunciation, and then they turned to ask us, what does uh, this uh, Chinese mean? I want to thank you for being part of uh, our program. And we do feel that the uh, overseas Chinese, their love and uh, how much they miss our motherland. And you work here is also a great contribution. And as you said, for y your contribution and your achievement is uh, the, one of the reasons for them to look up to us. As the restaurant owner just mentioned, there are tourists, some tourists are from uh, uh, China. And then first reach uh, Ecuador and then um, travel all the way south. Ecuador, then to Bolivia, via and uh, Peru and Chile, and then visit here in Ushuaia, and he will then go to Brazil and Colombia. So it's an it's a tour around South America, and then he will be visiting uh, Central America. His original plan was to take uh, one month to do this journey, to complete this journey. But now he's already been out for two months because he thinks that uh, this journey was just so much fun. So we strongly recommend that you, if you have the time uh, to visit here, and uh, Ecuador and uh, Warugay are free vi visa country to China. You do need a visa to go uh, to come here. And for Bolivia, it's a visa on upon landing, and uh, it is also very easy to get visa to Argentina and Brazil. So there is very little barrier when it comes to visa, and it's becoming more and more convenient. And so hopefully, in the future, more and more. Chinese people will, uh, Chinese tourists will come to South America to experience this quite unique charm and culture and scenery. And that's 
basically everything we have for today's live broadcast. We really look forward to seeing more of you here in Ushuaia. I wish you a lovely weekend and good night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us in this live broadcast. Uh, hopefully you can follow us in our portals and applications and our live broadcast on a daily basis. We bring you more information live broadcast in the future. That's all for today's live broadcast. Thank you. Goodbye.